In this tutorial, we run through the signal placement rules for home signals, warning signals and shunt signals. Drawing the signals in the correct place on the switchboard is the key to successful signal operation in iTrain. Welcome back. We saw in the previous tutorial that despite the large number of different signal names available in iTrain, the purpose of each signal is to perform at least one of three different roles. A single role signal is only capable of performing one of these roles, either as a home signal or as a warning signal, or as a shunt signal. A multi-role signal can perform more than one role, either home and warning, or home and shunt, or home and warning and shunt. Where each of these three types of signals, home, warning and shunt, are drawn in the block and the order in which they are placed is crucial for iTrain to understand the intended role and operation of each signal and therefore how iTrain automatically assign the signal's role within the block's properties. There are rules for single role signals and simpler rules for a multi-role signal. But in general, for both types of signals, single role or multi-role, if possible, each signal should be drawn in the track to make it part of the track. Otherwise, iTrain will not find that signal and pressing the auto fill button will not assign the signal to that block's properties. A signal will still work if not placed in the track, for example in an empty square next to the track, but it still needs to be grouped to a block and will need to be manually assigned to the block's properties. It is OK to manually assign signals but it is much safer and more efficient to allow iTrain to do this automatically. OK, so now we will focus on the rules specific to drawing single role signals on the switchboard. For simplicity, in the following examples, the signals are only shown for one direction of travel in a block. If a track is bi-directional or preferred direction, bear in mind that signals may need to be drawn in both directions of travel. And remember, it is important to draw the signals on the switchboard in accordance with these rules rather than trying to replicate the positions of the real signals on your physical layout. OK, so where do we draw a home signal, often also called the main signal or starter signal? Well, Rule 1A says a single role home signal is drawn in the track anywhere at the end of the block. Figure 6 in the documentation shows a single block with a home light signal placed near the end of the block in direction next, as indicated by the solid arrow. And the same for the mechanical semaphore signal. How do we know that the signal's role is a home signal? Well, its name will often give us a clue, but if you are unsure, 
Appendix A provides details of each of the signals for that regional set and states the signal's role. For a single role warning signal, as shown in figure 7, rule 1b says a single warning signal, when required and when related to a home signal within the same block, should be drawn at the beginning of the block. It must be drawn prior to its related home signal within the same block. There must be a gap of at least one grid square between the home signal and the warning signal. When autofill is pressed, iTrain establishes a link between the warning signal and the home signal in the same block. The precise placement is important because if the warning signal is drawn in the grid square immediately prior to the home signal, so without a gap, or anywhere after the home signal, iTrain establishes a link between the warning signal in that block and the home signal in the block after it. The exact placement of the warning signal is therefore important. Because, of course, what we need to achieve is a relationship between the signals such that a warning signal located at the beginning of the block reacts to the state of the home signal contained within the same block and a warning signal located at the end of the block, either in the square directly prior to the home signal or anywhere after the home signal, reacts to the state of the home signal located in the block ahead. The green lines here, of course, are not shown on the iTrain switchboard. They are just for illustration. If there are two individual warning signals, W1 and W2 in figure 8, in the same block A, the first warning signal, W1, should be drawn anywhere at the start of the block and prior to the home signal HA. W1 will then be automatically linked to the home signal HA within the same block A. The second warning signal, W2, in the same block A, if required, should be placed anywhere after the home signal HA within the same block A. The warning signal W2 will then be automatically linked to the home signal HB in the block after it, so in block B. Now, if necessary, the second warning signal W2 can be drawn prior to the home signal HA, but then must be drawn only in the grid square directly prior to the home signal HA. So importantly, without a gap between the two signals, as shown in figure 9. When the signals are drawn in either of these specific logical orders on the switchboard, pressing Auto Fill in block A will correctly assign each of the three signals to the appropriate field within the block's properties. W1 to the Signal Warning Signal field for block A W2 
to the block warning signal field for block A and HA to the home signal field for block A. How the warning signals should be assigned is detailed in rule number 2D 1 and 2, which we will cover in the next tutorial. If the first warning signal is not required in the block, the rules for the second warning signal still apply. For a shunt signal, if it is required in a block, as shown in figure 10, rule 1D says it should preferably be drawn prior to the home signal in the same block. We say preferably because in theory it is allowed to place the shunt signal anywhere in the block, including after the home signal. But if a warning signal is placed in the square directly prior to the home signal, so without a gap between the warning signal and the home signal, the shunt signal must be placed prior to this warning signal, not after it. So for simplicity and consistency, we recommend always placing the shunt signal prior to the home signal. If the block does not contain a home signal, the shunt signal can be drawn anywhere within that block. If a block contains a single roll home signal, a single roll warning signal or signals, and a single roll shunt signal, as shown in figure 11, rule 1E says the recommended logical order is as follows. The first warning signal, W1, is drawn at the beginning of the block. Then towards the end of the block, the shunt signal, S. Then the home signal, H A, and finally the second warning signal W2. So the recommended logical order is W1 at the beginning of the block and towards the end of the block the shunt signal S, then H A, then W2. Or W1 at the beginning of the block and S and HA towards the end of the block. So we are effectively following the order of the signal fields shown in the block properties direction tabs. Again as a reminder if the track is bi-directional or has a preferred direction the signals must also be drawn for the other direction if needed. And remember to orientate the signal for the direction of travel. So for all the German signals, that means within I-Train they must be orientated for the right-hand side of the track in the direction of travel. For a multi-role signal, if needed in a block, things are much simpler. There is only one rule, rule 1F, which simply says it must always be drawn at the end of the block. And no more than one multi-role signal for each direction of travel per block. So figure 12 shows a multi-roll signal in both directions. Now lastly, the German and Swiss signals and some other regional groups have a special signal where a home signal and a warning signal or perhaps some other type of signal are mounted on the same mast. 
these are not classified as multi-role signals. Instead, they must be treated as two individual single role signals when assigning the signal and is normally drawn at the end of the block. We will talk more about this type of signal in a future tutorial. OK, so that is all for this tutorial. In a later tutorial, we run through some examples where we create and set up the signals from scratch and therefore see how these rules are applied. But before that, in the next tutorial, we need to run through the rules for assigning the signals to the blocks properties. So, until then, bye for now.